So the question that was posed to the Shaykh, the Allama, the Faqih, Muhammad bin Salih, Al-Uthaymin, rahimahullah ta'ala, he was asked the question, what are the excuses that are allowed for a person to break their fast and not to fast? So he answered that those who are excused from fasting, then they are the following types of people. The one who is sick and the one who is upon a journey. In another fatwa, Shaykh Ibn Uthaymin said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left both of them open, meaning sickness and trouble. So what is considered to be sickness is what a person considers to be an ailment that, that has befallen him. So there is not a particular measure that you reach and you say, well, I believe now you can break your fast. No, every person... He is aware of his own situation. And Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah ta'ala, mentioned in one of his sayings that the sickness that is allowed for a person to break his fast is a sickness that causes him hardship and that if he continues to fast, the hardship would only increase and the ailment and the pain would only increase. So such a person is allowed to break his fast. So it is allowed for a sick person to break his fast and the one who is upon a journey. As has appeared and as has been mentioned in the Quran and we mentioned that yesterday. Likewise he said from those who are excused from fasting is the pregnant woman who fears for herself and she fears for her unborn child. Meaning that she fears that there will be difficulty for her. Hardship upon her and hardship upon her child that they will suffer. So they are excused from fasting. And likewise is the woman who is breastfeeding, that she fears, the, fears for herself if she fasts, and she fears hardship for herself and for her breastfeeding child. And from those who are excused also is a person who is needed. For example, he mentions a person who it is required from him to break his fast to save the life of another person. So for example, a person, he sees someone drowning in the ocean. So it is required from him, he sees that it is necessary for him to break his fast to go and save that person who is drowning. Or a person who is surrounded from all sides by a fire, so it is required from him to break his fast so he may save that person from being burned to death. And likewise, a person who is out on jihad, so he's gone out to perform jihad, so it is allowed for him to break his fast to give him strength in battle in the cause of Allah. So for that person it is allowed. Then all of, this, all of these are from the reasons which allow a person to break his fast. And that is because the Prophet wasallam he said to his companions at the conquest or before the conquest of Mecca, he said to them in a hadith that is collected by Imam Muslim in his Sahih, Prophet wasallam said to his companions, you will meet the enemy tomorrow. And the breaking and breaking your fast will make you stronger. So break your fast. So if a person has a reason to break his fast, so then he breaks it. And when he breaks his fast, he is not obligated to withhold from food for the rest of the day. Meaning, so if a person broke his fast in order to save the life of another person from perishing, then he may continue to eat and drink for the rest of the day, even after he has saved that person. So, he is not obligated to fast for the rest of the day, because the obligation to fast that day has been removed, 
due to the allowable excuse to break his fast. So a person doesn't say, I've saved his life now, it took him half an hour. So now I should withhold for the rest of the day from eating and drinking. Rather, he can continue to eat and drink for the rest of the day. And he said, for this reason we say, for this reason we say that the most uh, correct saying in this affair is that if the sick person, after breaking his fast, that he returns to good health during the day, then it is, he is not obligated to withhold from eating and drinking for the rest of the day. So for example, let's say at 9 a.m. in the morning, he feels that he is sick and, and, and unable to continue the fast. So at 9 a.m., he breaks his fast. By 11 a.m., he does not feel any more pain and the ailment has left him. So does he withhold from food for the rest of the day? No. Rather, he can continue eating and drinking for the rest of the day. So if a person, for example, upon a journey, that he, reach, that, that he reaches his home, he's been upon a journey, so he did not fast. Then he reaches his home in the middle of the day. Then he is not obligated to withhold from food and drink for the rest of the day. Rather, he can carry on eating and drinking for the rest of the day. Likewise, if a woman, that her menstruation stops in the middle of the day or during the day of the fasting month, and she was to perform the ghusl so she is no longer bleeding, then she is not obligated to fast for the rest of the day. She can continue eating and drinking. And this is because all of these people, that they broke their fast or they did not fast due to a reason that was allowable. So therefore, that day for them is not a day of obligatory fast because they had a good reason to break their fast. And due to the Sharia allowance for them to break their fast on that day, they are not obligated to fast for the rest of the day either. And this is in opposition to another type of person. The person for whom it is established that the month of Ramadan, the first day of Ramadan has begun. But he didn't know. So the day of Ramadan began and he doesn't know. He's eaten at the beginning of the day. Someone came to him and said to him, today... It's a fasting day because the moon was sighted last night. He says, I didn't know. So what does he do? Does he continue to eat for the rest of the day? No, because he is not in the same position as those who are allowed to break the fast. He wasn't allowed to break the fast. Aslan. It's just that he didn't know. So now that he knows, he must keep the fast for the rest of the day. And the difference between the two is clear and apparent. And that is because once the proof is established during that day that it is a day of fasting, then it is, then it is established that one fasts upon that day. So therefore it is obligatory upon the people to fast. However, for those who are excused and have an excuse to break their fast, then... Naam. However, those who did not know that it was a day of fasting because of their ignorance, then they were excused up until they found out because they were ignorant of that knowledge. However, once they found out it was a day of fasting, then it is obligatory upon them to complete that day. This is completely different to the one who knows it is a day of fasting, but Allah has given him a valid excuse to break his fast. Whereas the second person has a valid reason and a shari'i obligation to fast for the rest of the day. And there is a hadith that proves that point anyway as the Prophet wasallam commanded the Sahaba to fast when they knew that it was a day of fasting and they did not begin the day fasting uh, up until they were informed of it. 
He said, Sheikh Al-Fawzan, and for this reason, if they were aware of the, fa of the fact that it is a day from the days of Ramadan, then they are obligated to fast. As for those that we have already indicated that they had an excuse to break their fast, then it was allowed for them to break their fast alongside the fact that they knew it was a fasting day. So the difference between the two is clear and apparent between the two groups of people. Wallahu a'lam wa billahi tawfiq. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa jazakumullahu khairah.